Hello and welcome to the Design for Learning tutorial on using Zoom video conferencing software. This is a quick introduction to Zoom, which is one of the easiest platforms to learn and has controls that are highly visible and accessible. Some people feel that Zoom trades robust functionality for simplicity of design, but it's a favorite of the D4L practice session moderators for just that reason. This tutorial represents lessons learned in teacher practice sessions. These were live, play-in-the-sandbox sessions that allowed students to try meeting technology together in a safe space before teaching real students. Each group had an experienced moderator, and this tutorial represents the most common tools and tips we came across in all of our sessions. Zoom is evolving software, so keep in mind that what you see here may not exactly match your own instance of the software, and the tools are changing all the time. When you open a meeting as a host, your screen will look something like this, though you might have different defaults. You'll see a dialog box pop up asking, how do you want to join the audio conference? This is how you choose what method you'll use to hear and speak in the meeting. We'll select Join Audio Conference by Computer so that we can use our computer or headset, microphone, and speakers. Make sure that the tab on the right is highlighted in the dialog and then click the big green button. You'll also see a link to test computer mic and speakers. You'll want to do this before each meeting just to ensure everything goes smoothly once you start. Once you select your audio connection and test your mic and speakers, you'll arrive back at the home screen. If something is wrong with your computer audio, you always have the option to join by phone. To get back into the audio options, click the icon to join audio again. This will bring that same dialog box back up. This time, click on the join by phone tab. Now you'll see phone numbers to dial in, as well as the meeting ID and participant ID numbers. You can direct your participants through the same process if they're having trouble with their computer audio. Once you're back on the home screen, hover your mouse pointer along the bottom of the meeting room and the menu bar will appear. This has all the options you need to manage your meeting. It disappears when you're not hovering so that you can see more of your screen, but it's always down there. If you choose to manage participants, you'll be able to see who is attending your meeting and manage their access and settings. Clicking Manage Participants opens a panel like this on the right-hand side of your meeting room. At the top of the panel, you can adjust individual permissions. You can mute, unmute, and rename participants. At the bottom of the panel, you can control participants as a group. For example, you can mute and unmute all participants. This is especially useful as a quick fix if there is a lot of background noise because a participant hasn't thought to mute themselves. Back at the home screen, you can manage your own audio and visual controls. On the left-hand side of your menu bar, you can mute and unmute your own mic by clicking on Mute with the microphone icon. It has a red slash through it if muted or turned off. You can also see your relative volume when green fills up the mic icon while you speak. On your menu bar are your webcam controls. Click Start Video with the video camera icon to turn on your webcam. As you can see, the video goes live from your webcam immediately. Hi everyone! You can turn off your video by pressing Stop Video and the video camera icon again. You'll go right back to the home screen. Another one of the functions available in Zoom is Chat. It's located between Share Screen and Record in the middle cluster of icons on the menu bar. Once you click Chat, it pops open a panel on the right side of the screen in the same area where Manage Participants was shown. I've closed the Participants panel, but they can both be open at the same time in the right-hand panel if you would like them to be. 
You type in the lower portion of the chat panel and the messages show above it in order from top to bottom. All messages show here from you or anyone else in the chat. You can send messages to everyone in the meeting or select participants to communicate with privately. Under More, you have the option to save the chat. Back at the home screen, let's explore recording a live Zoom session. Click on the Record icon right next to the chat icon in the middle cluster on the menu bar. This immediately begins recording the session. You'll notice the Record icon changes when you click on it. Instead, you'll see two buttons, one to pause and one to stop the recording. In the upper left-hand part of the meeting screen, you can see a status bar that indicates the session is being recorded. We can also choose to share our screen by clicking the Share Screen icon in the middle of the menu bar. When we click Share Screen, we get a lot more options than you might expect. The dialog box that opens allows you to share your desktop or Apple device screen, a specific application or document you have open, and use a whiteboard. Let's explore the whiteboard first. Once you click the whiteboard icon, you open a collaborative screen where you and your participants can type, draw, and do other freeform work together. You can manage whiteboard options from the menu bar at the top of the screen. This includes things like clearing a whiteboard completely, clearing just your own drawing or another participant's, undoing or redoing an action, picking a tool, and more. What if you wanted to share a document that you already had open on your computer? You simply need to select the document from the list of options in the Share Screen dialog box. Your document pops up just like this. You should note that this is not file sharing, but simply showing your document as you work on it. It'll have the big green frame around it as you type. How about we actually try to share the screen? In my case, I have dual monitors, so I have the option to show either one by choosing Desktop 1 or Desktop 2. Once I select a monitor to share, the whole screen shows with a thin green frame around it and a small menu bar at the top. When you hover over the top part of the screen, the menu bar shows. This gives you many of the same controls for the meeting room that you normally see when you hover on the bottom of the home screen, but also has pause sharing, annotation, and other special controls that are just for screen sharing. When you click on the red button to stop share, you return to your meeting room home screen. To end your meeting, simply select End Meeting on the far right of your menu bar. That's it! Zoom is simple and easy. Just get in there and give it a try. Our project partners include IMLS, SCRLC, ESLN, and the iSchool at SU. Design for Learning has been made possible by a grant from the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services.